good morning all in this session we are going to discuss about arithmetic sequences this session is especially for class 10 students right class 10 for cbse you have arithmetic progression and for state syllabus the first chapter itself is arithmetic sequence right now what is a sequence we can write a set of numbers that is followed by certain rules right for example, I'm writing natural numbers and we know natural numbers, right? Starting from one, then second AM, two, third number three, four, five, six, seven. This goes up to infinity, right? So we can say the natural number starts from one. So this can be called as first position or we can call position right okay so for one this is first position and for two this is a second position this is a third position and fourth position fifth position sixth position seventh position and so on right so the element or the number in the first position can be called as first tape so I am writing this one as first tape. Okay, so we can call it the tapes, right? Okay, so first tape is denoted by T1. So T1 is our first tape of the sequence. And T2 is the second tape, right? Second tape of the sequence. Similarly, T3 is equal to the element in the third position. Or it is also called as third term, right? So third term is denoted by T3, right? So we can say R1 as first term. So we can write this is a first term and second term T2, three is the third term T3, fourth term, fifth term, and so on, right? So look at this sequence. Your first term is one, right? And second term is two. So you can obtain two by adding just one to one. So first term plus one, that will give you second term. Similarly, you can obtain three from adding one to two, right? So there's, there's some rule that following for writing this number. Here is a simple rule. We simply adding one to the first term, you will get second term. And again, adding one to the second term, you will get third term, fourth term, fifth term, sixth term, and so on. Right. So we have various positions and first position number in the first position that is called first term, a number in the second position that is called second term, a number in the third position that is called as third term, and so on. Right. Okay. Now I'm writing this number in another form, right? So we have, we know this is the one is our first term, right? So let, I'm indicating first term by some letter A, right? So two is obtained by, now we have A equal to one, right? Then how will you obtain two? Two is obtained by adding just one to this number, right? So we have, I'm denoting this as A. Now A equal to one. And this is also called as first term denoted by T1. Now you will get two by adding A plus one, All right? This can be obtained by adding A plus two. A means equal to one. So one plus one, that is two. One plus two, that is equal to three. This can be write as A plus three. Then a plus four and so on, right? Okay, now I'm writing this A is equal to first term of this sequence, right? Then we get the second term. So our first term denoted by T1 is equal to A. Now what is T2? T2 is equal to A plus one, all right, A plus one for this sequence, right? Now, we have T3 
that is equal to first term. First term is a plus two, right? And we can obtain d four that is equal to a plus three and so on, right? Now we already told we can get two. Just substituting a equal to one, right? Here a equal to one, and for getting two, a is one, and we have one plus one that is equal to two. Here two plus two, right? Then two plus three, two plus four, and so on. So you can write this one, two. Second term is two. Third term is this is not two. Or first term is one, right? Not not coming two. This is one plus three, and then one plus a is one, right? And this will get three. This will get four, and this will get five, and so on, right? So this is an example of an arithmetic sequence. Right now, what I am going to do is, I am considering any two preceding terms. Right. So here we can consider first term T one, second term T two. So what is T two minus T one? That is T two and T one are two consecutive terms. Right. Of the sequence that we get this is equal to a plus two minus A plus one. This value is equal to A and A get cancelled. Two minus one. That is equal to one. All right. Now I am taking T three. Just before T three, we have second term T two. So third term minus second term. That will give you A plus two. So third term is A plus two. No. Here it is. T two is A plus one. Right. A plus one minus first term. We know our first term is a itself, right? A. So a and b answer is equal to one. T three is a plus two. Here a plus two minus t two. T two is a plus one, right? Minus a plus one. This will give you this a and a get answer again one. Similarly, after t three, we have fourth term t four minus t three. T three is just the term before. T four, right? So we can write T four is equal to a plus three, a plus three minus T two, T three. That is a plus two. That will again give one, right? So look at the sequence. But so the difference of any two consecutive terms. That is a term minus the te the term before. That that will give a constant number. Here we see this is one difference of T three minus T two also one, T four minus T three that is also one, right? So this difference one is called common difference of an arithmetic sequence. This is always a constant, right? So common difference is usually denoted by the letter D, right? This is for common difference. Here the common difference is equal to D equal to one, right? So AP or in arithmetic sequence, we have always a common difference. That is, the difference of any two consecutive terms is always a constant, right? So we are subtracting higher term by the term just before it. That is equal to a constant. That is the property of an arithmetic. Sequence, right? So we have various position. The first number we are representing it is a first position or first term, and second number is a number number in the second position, or it is denoted uh, represented as second term, right? I'm writing another sequence, right? For example, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. This goes on to infinity. So This phi is our first term, and we are denoted by t1, and our second term t2. This is our third term. There is a number coming in the third position. So we can say various position, right? Of this sequence, this is the first position, second position, third position, fourth position, fifth position, and goes on, right? So the number in the first position that is called first term. Denoted by t1. T stands for ten. Ten. 
the first letter in the word tail right tail and second tail there is a number in the position second position so that is equal to 10 so second tail so here first tail is equal to 5 second tail that is equal to 10 third tail is equal to 58 fourth tail is equal to 20 and so on right so in order to get the second tail so first time let I am denoting this by using the letter A. So A stands for first tail, right? Okay, first tail. Now, how can we obtain second tail? Second tail, that is T2. T2 can be write as T1 plus 5, right? So T1 plus 5. That is equal to A plus 5, right? A plus 5. So first tail plus Similarly, we can obtain T3 is equal to T2 plus 5, right? So, the numerical value A is equal to 5. 5 plus 5, you will get 10. So, we know that the value of T2 is 10. So, 10 plus 5, that is equal to 50. So, fourth term can be obtained by third term plus 5. That is a common difference. So, we know that the value of T3 is 50. So, 15 plus 5, that will give you 20, right? So, we can say, first tail, right? Okay, is equal to A1, right? T1 is equal to A, first tail, right? Second tail, that is obtained by A plus B, A plus common difference. And we know that, T3 is equal to the second term T2 plus common difference. So, what's the value of T2? T2 is A plus D. So, substituting for T2, we will get this is equal to A plus D. This is our T2 plus common difference. That will be A plus 2 times common difference, right? Similarly, we can write T4. T4 means T3 plus common difference, right? And we know the value of T3 is A plus 2D. That means A plus 2D plus D, this D, right? So this is equal to A plus 3D, right? Okay, so you look at the sequence. We have T1, that's what A, T2. So here suffix is 2. So A plus 1D, that means A plus D. Now look at the term T3. T3 means suffix is 3. So here, a plus 2 times t. So this one t3, this one a plus 2. We are decreasing 3 by 1. 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. So 2d. So t4, look at this. Here suffix is 4. 4 times is a plus 3 times common difference, right? So in this manner, we can obtain what is the value of t10. t10 means here suffix is 10, right? So, we have first term A plus how many D? For second term, for suffix 2, we have 1 D. For 3, we have 2 D. For 4, 3 D. So, for 10, is decreased by 1, decremented by 1. So, A plus 9 D. This is the 10th term. So, similarly, we can write what is uh, 25 term. 25 term is first term plus 25, that is decremented by 1. So, this will be A plus 24D, right? Now, somebody wants to know the value of T100. What's the value of T100? We have A here, the 100th tail. So, that is decreased by 1. So, we have 99, right? So, T100 is equal to A plus 99D, right? So, in general, we can say nth tail, that is denoted by C suffix N, right? So, nth term is have, we have first term A. Here the suffix is N. So, N should be decremented by 1. So, nth term can be denoted by A plus N minus 1 into D. So, this is the expression for finding nth term of an arithmetic sequence. So, keep in mind that for an arithmetic sequence, we have a common difference. Common difference mean, means the difference of any two consecutive terms is equal to 
a constant, right? Okay, so that difference we denote or we mention it is a common difference, right? So the number in the first position is called first time, and number in the second position that is called second time, and number in the tenth position that is called tenth time. Similarly, number in the nth position that is equal to nth time. So nth time of an AP is obtained by a plus n minus one d. Right. So we can write nth time nth time of an arithmetic sequence. Right. Arithmetic sequence that is denoted by tn, t suffix n. This is a number in the nth position of the sequence. That is equal to a, that is first term, plus n minus 1 times d. Okay. So, this you should keep in mind how to find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. Right. Okay. So this is one of the most important formula that we are using in this chapter. Right. Okay. For example, I'm writing an AP. First term is suppose 10 and second term is 12. Third term is 14. Right. Then this goes on. Goes on. Now, we want to find the fifth term. So here we know T1 that is denoted by A. A is equal to 10. So, first term we have 10, and here the second term is given. What is T2? T2 is given as 12, and T3 that is given as 14, and goes on. Right. Now, what is the common difference? So, we have 12 minus 10 that is equal to 2, 14 minus 12 that is equal to 2. Again, the time is equal to 16, right? Just 10, 16 minus 14, that is equal to 2. So we can obtain common difference, right? Common difference is denoted by the using the letter D. D is equal to T2 minus T1. This is same as T3 minus T2, and so on. Right. That is equal to T4 minus T3. And so on. That will always be a constant. So here we have. T1 is equal to 10, right? Then T2 is equal to 12. So 12 minus 10, that is equal to 2, right? Here also we get T3 minus T2, that is, this is also is equal to 2. This is also is equal to 2. So the common difference D in this problem is 2, right? So we can evaluate any terms here. So I'm writing the first term, A is equal to 10, and common difference d is equal to 2. So our question is to find the tenth time. So find tenth time, t ten. That is equal to our question. Right. Then we want to find the t hundred. Right. Okay. So how will we evaluate t ten? We know t ten is equal to first term plus nine times common difference. That is a plus 9D. So A we know 10. 10 plus 9 multiplied by 2. Right. So this is equal to 10 plus 18. That is equal to 28. So 28 is the number in the tenth position. Right. Now what is the hundredth day? We know A plus N minus 1D. N minus 1 means 100 minus 1. Right. 100 minus 1 multiplied by 2, right. So we have to write A is equal to 10 plus 100 minus 1, 99 into 2, that is equal to 10 plus 198, that is equal to 2, no, 3. This is the value of the number in the 100th position, right. So in this manner, we can find any terms of this sequence. Okay. Now, I have another question 
in the same question, right? Okay, my question is to find which tail is 1900. Find, find the position, the position of 1900, right? In the above arithmetic sequence, right? Arithmetic sequence. So a term is given whose value is 1900. We want to determine what is the position of this number, right? Or which term is 1900. For that purpose, we can assume, right? Or we can imagine, what we have to imagine? Let nth term, assume nth term, and term is denoted by t suffix n. That is equal to 1900, right? That is the value of 1900. So we know the TN that is obtained by A plus N minus 1D. So we can write A plus N minus 1D. That is equal to 1900. Okay. Our question is to find the position of 1900. That means which term is 1900. So substitute the values of A. A is 10 plus N minus 1. Here the common difference we know that is equal to 2. That is equal to 1900. Now we have an equation. Simplify this equation and we will get the position of 1900. Right. So I am simplifying this. We have 10 plus 2n minus 2. That is equal to 1900. Right. So 10 minus 2, that is equal to 8 plus 2n. That is equal to 1900. Okay, solve this equation. We have 2n is equal to 1000. 900 this 80 is taking into RHS minus 8. That is equal to 1892. This is the value of 2n, right? Now we will get the value of n. n is equal to 1892. That divided by 2. Right. So what is the value of this? We get 1892. Divide by 2, 18, 9 times 18, 9, 4 times 8, 12, how many times 6 times? Right, 9, 46. So the value of n, that is equal to 9, 46, right. So 1,090, 900, that is, that is equal to T, 9, 4, 6. This is equal to 1,900. So the position of 1900 in this sequence is 946, right? 946 is the position of 1900. We can also check whether it is right or wrong. Okay, so for that purpose, you simply find 1946 10. All right. So by using the formula, we can obtain T946. That's your A. A is here. We are using A is 10, right? So 10 plus 1496 minus 1. That multiplied by 2. So this is equal to 10 plus 945 into 2. Right. So we have 10 plus 945 into 2. That is equal to 1890. So the answer is 1,000. Right. So suppose a number is given and we want to check the position of that number. What we have to do? We just, just assume that number is the nth tail and calculate a plus n minus t. From that equation, you can obtain the value of n. If n is an integer, since n means that the position of certain number in an arithmetic sequence. So position is always an integer. So we know the first time is the first position, second time is second position, third time is third position, fourth time fourth position. So n is always an integer, right? Okay, an integer. So while solving, if you get n as an integer, 
then that number will be in the sequence. Now, for the same sequence, 10, 15, no, no, I am 10, 12, 14, 16, this is our sequence, right? Now, check, check whether, whether 27, 27 belongs to this sequence, this sequence, right? If so, find the position of 27 in the sequence. So this is our question. <coughs> we got a sequence and we want to check whether this 27 belongs to this sequence. Actually, looking at the sequence, we know this is 10. Common difference is 2, right? So next time will be 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, and so on. So 27 never belongs to this sequence, right? Now we want to check whether 27 belongs to this sequence, etc. So what we have to do, we assume nth tail is equal to 27, right? And solve for n. If you get an integer, n is an integer, then this number belongs to this sequence. If n is not an integer, that number never belongs to that sequence. So we can write this as a plus n minus 1b. That is equal to 27. That is nth tail is equal to 27. Here we know the value of a that is equal to 10 plus n minus 1. D is 2 multiplied by 2. That is equal to 27. Now simplify this. We get 10 plus 2 times n minus 2. That is equal to 27. 10 minus 2. That is equal to 8 plus 2n is equal to 27. Right. So you will get 2n is equal to 27 minus 8. Right. So that is equal to 15. Not 15. 27 minus 8. That is equal to 19. Right. Or we can get n is equal to 19 divided by 2. That is equal to 9.5. Since here n is equal to 9.5. This is not an Integer 9.5 is not an integer. This is a fraction, right? So we know that n means position. Position is always an integer. While solving for n, if you are getting a non-integer or an non-integer number, then that number never belongs to the sequence. Here in this problem, we got n is equal to 9.5, right? So 27 is not belongs to the sequence, right? So in this manner, we can check whether the number belongs to the sequence of n. Suppose I am considering another number, right? Another number, and we want to check whether that number belongs to a sequence, right? Now we can we can write another sequence. Okay. okay. So we are starting from four, five. Then I am writing next number is three, then one, right? So what is the next number of the sequence? We can find first is five. So this is a decreasing sequence, right? So here the common difference is the difference of three consecutive times. So we uh, take second time minus first time. Second time is three. So three minus five, that is equal to minus two, right? So from the sequence, we can obtain the first time. This is the first position, right? First position. So I'm writing the positions. Okay. First position, second position, third position, fourth position, fifth position, sixth position, and so on. Right. Here, the number in the first position that is called first tail denoted by T1. That is represented by A, right? A. This is 3 is our T2. 1 is our T3. Okay, so we can find what is the next, next term after 1. After 1, we have to find the common difference, right? So here you get a common difference. So T1 is given as 5, T2 is given as 3. So common difference, D is equal to T2 minus T1. That is equal to 5, that is equal to 3 minus 5. 
is equal to minus 2. So minus 2 is a common difference. So next step, you just add 1 plus common difference. So next time become 1 plus minus 2, that is minus 1. Next time become minus 1 plus minus 2, minus 3, minus 5, minus 7, minus 9. This go to up to minus infinity. That sequence goes to minus infinity. Right. So in this sequence, we have first term common difference. Right. So what we have to write? We can write the given data. A is equal to, that first term is equal to 5. And common difference, D is equal to 3 minus 5. 3 minus 5. That is equal to minus 2. So this is from the sequence. We can obtain first term and uh, common difference. Now, if my question is to find what is 20th term, right? 20th term. And we know that the 20th term, that is equal to first term plus n minus 1 into d. Here n is 20. So, you can write this is equal to a plus 20 minus 1 multiplied by common difference. d is equal to minus 2, right? So, what is the value of a? Substitute the value of a, that is 5, first term, right? So, we can write 5 plus 20 minus 1, that is 19 multiplied by minus 2, or is equal to 5 minus 19 into 238, that is equal to minus 33. So, 20th term is minus 33, right? So, you can determine what is 8th term. 8th term is a plus 7d. Right. 7 minus 1, that's great. So simplify this, we get a is 5 plus 7 into minus 2. That is equal to 5 minus 14. That is equal to minus 9. This is the 8th term, right? So sixth, first term, this is 10, right? First, second term, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, this is the 7th term, and 8th term. So we got 8th term is equal to minus 9, right? Now, check whether, check whether minus 1, minus 1, not 8 belongs to this sequence or not. So, we have a number minus 1, not 8. We want to check whether this number belongs to, belongs to the sequence, belongs to the sequence, right? Okay. How can we check this for that purpose? We assume let the nth term is equal to minus 1 or 8. And we can write nth term is given as a plus n minus 1d that is equal to minus 1 or 8. What's the value of a? a is 5 plus n minus 1. Here the common difference is minus 2, right? Minus 2. That is equal to minus 1 or 8. Now, simplify this equation and find the value of n. If it is an integer, since n is position, position should be always an integer, then this 108 belongs to the sequence. Otherwise, not. That means if n is a fraction, we can say 108 is not belongs to the sequence. Right. Now, simplify f5 minus 2n plus 2, that is equal to minus 108. So, 5 plus 2, that is 7, minus 2n is equal to minus 1 not 8. Right. Now, simplify this. So, as to find the value of n and check whether n is an integer or not. Right. So, we can solve here. So, we get 7 minus 2n, that is equal to minus 1 not 8. This 7 is taking here, so minus 7. So we get minus 2n, that is equal to minus 115, right? Now solve for n, we will get n is equal to 115 divided by 2, right? This is not an integer, not an integer. This is a fraction number, right? Integer. So you divide, what is the correct numerical value? We can divide 5 times 10, 1. Right. So, here, 15, 15, 
7 times 14, 1 0, 5 times 7. So the value of this is equal to 57.5. 57.5 is a fraction, not an integer. So minus 1 not h is not belongs to this sequence. In this manner, we can check whether a number belongs to a sequence or not. Right. So in this session, we start discussed what is an arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence means any sequence or set of numbers that is arranged in a arranged in an order followed by certain rules. Here, what is the rule? Here, the rule is the difference of any two preceding terms is a constant or the difference of any two consecutive terms that is always a constant. That difference is called common difference, right? Common difference. So the number in the first position that is called the first term. So we can write an arithmetic sequence, right? Arithmetic sequence or arithmetic progression. We can write first term that is equal to A. Second term is A plus common difference. Third term is A plus two times common difference. And fourth term, this is A plus five times common difference. No, A plus three times common difference. A plus four times common difference and goes on. This is our first term P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5. Right. So in between any two consecutive terms, that's T2 minus T1, that is same as T3 minus T2, that is same as T4 minus T3, that is equal to T5 minus T4, that is equal to the common difference. Then it is called, the sequence is called an arithmetic progression. Right. Okay. Now we can find nth term that is equal to a plus n minus 1b. So we studied one formula so as to determine the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. So suppose any number is given, any number is given. We can check, we can check whether that number belongs to the arithmetic sequence by simply assuming that as an nth term. So we can put that number is equal to a plus n minus 1 d, right? Then solve for d, solve for, no d, solve for n. Since n is the position of the, of the number in the sequence, if that position is an integer, that is, you put the tn is equal to the given number, right? Given number. We are assuming the given number is the nth term. And solve for n, solve for n. If this n is an integer, n is an integer, then what happens? Then the number, number belongs to the sequence, right? Belongs to sequence. Okay, so this we should keep in mind, right? So any sequence in between two preceding terms have a common difference and we can write the nth term of expression. That is going to A plus N minus one multiplied by the common difference. Okay, then the problem will come to us. Some number will, give, will be given. Then they ask to check whether that number belongs to the sequence or not, right? So put nth term is equal to that number and solve for n. If n is an integer, that number is definitely belongs to that sequence, right? Okay, in the next session, we will discuss more things related to arithmetic sequence. Okay, thank you. Bye.